trees, they are giants of space and of time. The highest trees are more than 120 meters high, and the oldest ones are older than 5,000 uh, years. I would just like to start with this uh, view of this uh, impressive tree with uh, a thought uh, for the wonder, beauty and majesty of the trees to take the citation of Rachel, Rahel Kanso, uh, Carson in uh, our conference journal. The trees are perhaps the strangest uh, beings we can find on earth and they have much to do with our inner constitution. They are like uh, premonitions of what man is and what man should be. And they will help us, I think, to understand where the signals of life are coming from. We are, were speaking of that yesterday and some uh, aspect or results of uh, research on trees uh, will open, uh, I think, interesting um, windows. Forests and trees, they are interfaces of exchanges. The four elements are uh, meeting here through the trees. And in fact, we should not only uh, think uh, and research in terms of trees, but also in terms of forests, which are a kind of organism uh, of a higher order. And uh, trees and forests are essen essential for the development of life on Earth. They are much more essential than is usually um, admitted. But coming back to the single tree and to plants in general, I would like to draw the attention uh, to what uh, photosynthesis effectively is. Usually, uh, it is considered that we have three uh, inputs uh, for photosynthesis. Um, we have we have the uh, usual um, equation of photosynthesis with uh, CO2, water, and uh, energy. Uh, of sun which are uh, coming on the leaf and usually we have two outputs in many uh, uh, reference books or uh, general books uh, namely uh, the building of new uh, carbohydrates, glucose and oxygen. But in fact if you take the full uh, form of the photosynthesis, it's not only 6 CO2 and 12 H2O water and energy, and 6 H2O, it's 12 H2O, and the, uh, the water is uh, separated, hydrolyzed, and gives uh, glucose, C6H2O6, and oxygen, 6O2, and 6 atoms, uh, molecules of water, H2O. And this is very uh, essential to have the complete uh, form of photosynthesis, which is uh, also given to uh, sunlight. Namely, if you look uh, how the comp components are, um, are uh, given here, from the 12 uh, atoms of water, we have six, uh, 12 um, from the 12 molecules of water going in, we have 12 atoms in the glucose and uh, 12 atoms uh, belonging to six molecules of a new water. The 6H2O at the end is in fact new water made of water from the uh, uh, upflow of water uh, and with the hydrogen and the oxygen comes from the uh, carbon uh, dioxide, from the CO2. So it's not uh, as usually thought that the oxygen comes just from the CO2. The oxygen comes from the splitting of water and the new water comes from the splitting of water and taking up the oxygen of the carbon. So we have 
new, um, um, new glucose, carbohydrates. You have new oxygen, which comes, which comes from splitting of water, and we have new water, which has never been, never been flowing in the system before, in form of these, of these two, uh, six uh, molecules of uh, virgin or juvenile water. And uh, if we consider the quantities which are in, uh, involved here, we have for uh, taking just the values for wood, which is almost the same general uh, um, formula like uh, glucose uh, because of the mix of uh, substances. For 1,000 kilo woods, we need uh, 1,851 kilo CO2, one, uh, almost two tons of carbon dioxide. Involved is uh, something uh, more than one ton uh, water. And uh, this gives uh, one ton uh, wood and uh, 1.4 tons oxygen and more than 500 kilo new water. So you uh, realize that for every visible ton of wood built by the trees, you have uh, much more oxygen and you can imagine the, vol the volume of this new oxygen and you have uh, an amazing quantity of new water which has never been uh, flowing and uh, has never been uh, acting in uh, systems, in biological systems. So this is um, a very important aspect. And in this sense, we should uh, understand that in every leaf and in every uh, photosynthesis uh, activity, we have this new water which is integrated and for one cubic meter growth uh, forest or trees, we have uh, absorption of one ton CO2. It's another way of expressing these uh, weights. Production of 0 0.7 ton oxygen going into the air, but in the system, in the living uh, plants, we have the building of uh, 0.3 tons uh, new water. This is concerning the solar chronobiology, the photosynthesis, but the full photosynthesis, which uh, for my uh, impression or comprehension is very important for our new view of water. Before examining the paths of the water coming into this system uh, through the tree, uh, just a look on the organ of chloro uh, of the photosynthesis. It's the chloroplast, which is made of membranes uh, uh, piles of tilacoids and a very efficient uh, transparent system made of uh, membranes. Uh, we had just heard uh, about that before, uh, constituted by phospholipid uh, uh, components. Uh, and these membranes are assembled in a symmetric way. And uh, that makes that they are um, they are hydrophilic on their surface. So here I took two uh, interesting or good um, uh, pictures or figures or, uh, or uh, graphics from uh, the, the book on the fourth phase of water. We have in this system, in the photosynthesis linked with this new water, probably a very big involvement of uh, easy water and uh, my suggestion is that all this new water is absolutely clearly uh, easy water uh, in perfect form coming from that type of systems. And also the photosynthesis in this ability to uh, capture energy um, is directly linked to uh, this uh, water type. But now, how does water come into the photosynthesis um, apparatus or uh, uh, process, we have, uh, yes, it's too weak. We have uh, a tree a stem a figure with uh, the layers of the tree. Under the, uh, the bark, you have the cambium, the building uh, element, and inside you have the building of wood. And the water is flowing through the 
outer wood, which is called sap wood, the number two of this figure on the left down, and it is aspirated into, into the crown. It's not a pump. It's not uh, just mechanical. The water is pulled into the uh, crown, and that's very different than water which would be pushed into the crown. We have the uh, principle of um, absorption of pool, of implosion, or uh, things going into this direction in active, in the real uh, biology of tree. And the, the photosynthesis uh, go uh, then from the photosynthesis in the uh, thicker uh, liquid form with the sugars uh, downstream uh, under uh, pressure conditions in the layer number four. It is the, the phloem or the outer layer just uh, under the, the bark. And the upflow of water usually or often uh, occurs in uh, spirals and the downflow has not yet uh, been uh, studied exactly in what form does it flow down. But we already know that it goes up in, uh, in a, um, a spiral or vor uh, vortex uh, way. So, at the center we have a model of, uh, of the wood uh, for a pine tree uh, and in fact uh, I would just show uh, the water flow up, uh, up into the crown occurs through cells called uh, tracheids and all these cells are individually uh, closed uh, and they have just opening on the sides, on the sides called um, uh, pit apertures and uh, just to have a magnification, a microscopical magnification here, we have the view of such tracheids, which must be imagined as closed system, but here with the cut uh, for the microscope, we have a view inside. We have the cell wall and these apertures, and the water always goes from one cell to the other one through these openings, which is like a veil, uh, like a control system. Ah, thank you. All right. Like uh, through these waves. But before we <coughs> look what this implies, uh, just one word concerning the composition of this cell wall, which is like a tube. Um, and uh, the tree would have been uh, absolutely uh, able to make hydrophobic canalization for the water conduction into the crown. Uh, if you look uh, how uh, needles are made on the uh, surface, uh, it's hydrophobic, it's waxes, and uh, it's no problem for trees to make waxes. And they don't put waxes into their uh, vessels, into their tracheids. They make absolutely uh, at the highest uh, possible level, um, but with differences, uh, hydrophilic uh, systems for water conduction, which is absolutely paradoxical because uh, why do the trees conduct their water with hydrophilic systems uh, if they could uh, lose no water, making them uh, hydrophobic? But it's hydrophilic because the cell wall is made of cellulose and mixed with lignin, hemicellulose. Uh, the quantities are depending on the place in the depth of the cell wall, but uh, globally the cell wall is very hydrophilic and uh, is impregnated with water completely. And uh, this um, cell wall, uh, in its porous system, uh, contains absolute, uh, clearly um, easy uh, water, but as we are knowing now that uh, the... Uh, yeah. the the places near, or the, the sheet, uh, the, the zone of water near the cell wall, uh, it is known that uh, several hundred uh, microns can be uh, transformed, uh, bulk water made, uh, transformed into uh, um, fourth phase water. So we have a system which has uh, the possibility to bring water into the crown, transforming by surface contact water into easy form and in the cell wall itself, which is um, uh, saturated with water, it's uh, only easy water. 
And now, uh, going from one trachea to the other, we have this system, these valves. They cannot go directly through this, uh, through this element, the torus, which is uh, unpermeable. They have to go around it and uh, go to the next one. And that's the vision of this uh, valve in the central uh, part of the uh, bordered pit. And the water has to go uh, through the periphery zone, which is made of membranes, uh, which is almost pure um, cellulose, or uh, very near to pure cellulose, or hemicellulose is also, but it's a very hydrophilic uh, membrane system. And here we are, we are at the level of one, two, uh, and very few microns of distance from one membrane to the other. And here you see the water is filtered, is obliged to go through these uh, membranes, through these um, uh, fibrils, and uh, I imagine that could be an enhancement of these uh, quantities of uh, easy water at the end of the travel. We could have spoken of, uh, of uh, hardwood species or uh, broadleafed species. Here's just the model for conifers. For broadleaf, we could speak of uh, vortices, but uh, I, I don't have the time here. Uh, just now to come into the uh, field of uh, chronobiology. Uh, just with this uh, view, we can uh, speak of um, moon uh, cycles linked to sun in the field of germination and initial growth. Stem diameter fluctuation, the, flu the stem of the trees is not constant in its thickness. Uh, then we can speak of a bioelectrical potential variation. This is also shaped by the astronomical cycles. Uh, pulsation of buds. The buds of the trees are not uh, uh, rigid. They are always uh, in a pulsation uh, movement. We could have uh, spoken of the golden section, but I must limit uh, it because the golden section, the mathematics in the trees, makes a link between space or form and uh, movement or space and time. And that is a very interesting aspect. And tree felling date and wood properties here in the field of, uh, of uh, wood as physical material without any living cell anymore, we still have moon-related uh, variations. And here it's linked to very old tradition uh, which, has, uh, which uh, did inspire these uh, researches. Germination, here the synodic uh, moon cycles from new moon to full moon with uh, the first quarter, the last quarter, but we must uh, now understand that it's not just waxing moon and waning moon, we must go further and make the difference between the lunar weeks, that is one week with uh, 7.4 days and the second moon week, the third moon week, and the weeks are even to be divided in two. We will see that. Germination trials were made in the uh, Central East Africa. That was in Rwanda, where I was for four years there. And strangely, uh, this region is called the Mountains of the Moon, Les Montagnes de la Lune en Francais. And uh, with the volcanoes, with the last uh, mountain gorillas, and we had a research, uh, research institute just at the edge of this tropical forest in the mountains. Germination tests. We uh, tested uh, traditional uh, um, affirmations that uh, the um, germination uh, success depends on the moment when you put the seeds into the earth. And uh, the first uh, big-scale research with uh, annual seeds, with uh, wheat and, uh, and other vegetables were, were made by, um, by uh, Lili Colisco in the 20s, uh, according to um, an indication of Rudolf Steiner, who had told her, try to make um, experiments just uh, putting the seeds to, uh, to the earth two days before full moon and compare what happens if you make it two la uh, weeks later, two days before new moon and so on. We 
took this idea and we made a trial uh, over three years with a pre-trial and then a control trial. Uh, and sowing two days before full moon and two days before new moon. Here the, the open dots are before full moon and the uh, black dots before new moon. Uh, we obtained through the, uh, through the year, through the season, uh, a clear uh, variation of the effect with repetition and so. And control uh, trial showed the same in East Africa according to the si same uh, trial. That was uh, a first research. Now very interesting for all of us which are working with water is to, uh, to test the question, uh, is the water always the same? And now there is a very interesting research which has uh, been made by Frank Brown in the 70s in the United States. Uh, he, uh, by chance, he didn't uh, look for that. Uh, they were testing the, the water uptake of bean seeds in the laboratory every day. Uh, four hours in water, then they weight the quantity of water taking, uh, taken up. And they suddenly realized there is an inc in incredible lunar rhythm in this. Uh, and a few year years later, this um, discovery has been uh, tested by Belgian uh, researchers, uh, Spruit and uh, Verbalen. All these indications, you'll find them uh, in the references. I put the full references in my presentation. It will be as PDF dispo at disposal. But Spruit and Verbalen uh, took again the trials of uh, Brown, and they really could confirm that there is a moon uh, rhythm. But uh, it's more interesting that just growing, waxing moon and uh, waning moon, it's a rhythm in water uptake, which is um, which is uh, sequenced uh, according to the moon weeks. There is a growth and decline, growth and decline, growth and decline, growth and decline for every moon week. That's why we should speak of moon weeks and then of half of moon weeks uh, because every time something other ha happens. And this is not only a thing uh, concerning the seeds but because if you consider the quantity of water uh, during these three days from here to here. Uh, for example, it goes from 30 to 34. Um, it's about, it's almost 20% more water uptake just three days before, three days later. Uh, it's not only from the seeds because the seeds are always dormant, put at the dry state uh, into the water. Uh, my uh, proposition is that this has to do with uh, changes in the water structure. And here I put into this uh, context the, this uh, difference of viscosity of uh, EZ uh, water uh, compared to control water. And uh, this gives the impression that once the water is more viscous and once the water is more uh, wet uh, is more watery uh, and that's why the seed can take up more water or less water and this will be then uh, important for the, the seedling of the, the, the germination uh, effectiveness. Another research has been uh, a very beautiful success of uh, common research with Italian researchers and French uh, researcher uh, where we could show that the stem of the trees, when they are uh, kept under controlled conditions, are um, uh, pulsating. The next one concerns uh, the electrical potential of trees. Here again, it was a PhD thesis at the University of Innsbruck uh, that I could accompany. And uh, here, the uh, values of elect bioelectrical uh, potentials in the trees. It was made with um, Swiss stone pine and also with spruce outside. Uh, they were correlated with the modification of the gravity, the gravimetric tides. The red curve uh, is uh, parallel to what happens in the trees with the uh, electrical uh, potentials. 
But since it's interesting here, it's the blue curve. This is the curve of the atmospheric pressure. The Earth atmosphere has also heard tides, not only the water and the, the Earth uh, crust, the uh, Earth. Uh, the Earth uh, system, the geology, has also the same pulsation, but the atmosphere also. So you see the trees in this atmospheric system with their uh, electro uh, pulsation uh, in phase with the gravimetry, but also in phase with the atmospheric uh, pulsation. So we should never forget to take the atmospheric pressure in addition to gravity. And here I uh, can put that in correlation with uh, the um, uh, discovery that uh, there are energies uh, involved here uh, between uh, these uh, different forms of water and they must be here uh, at uh, stake. The next is uh, the question of the buds of the trees. We have uh, heard yesterday uh, what these uh, lambda factors are, the form factors and uh, in fact, uh, the bud is uh, built in the previous season in yes, thank you, in uh, August, and then during the whole winter, the bud tries to uh, make its break, and it happens in the spring. But during the whole winter, he's trying to do that. It's a pulsation. It's like an egg uh, going into um, an ovoid form, and so back, so forth. And the discovery of Lawrence Edwards. Uh, making photographies is that this uh, lambda value uh, variation is uh, clearly rhythmic and the rhythms are linked to the position of the moon to the sun for uh, some species like cherry but the alignment of the moon to some uh, uh, planets Mars for oak and suddenly we are confronted with old alchemistry uh, where the trees were linked to planets, to metals, and here with analysis of tree bud pulsation, we uh, come back to this old uh, uh, inspiration. Then the wood properties uh, as physical systems are also changing, and I show this uh, variation of that is in uh, French, but uh, means uh, water loss during the drying process. Uh, it's our work as wood engineers to understand how can we dry wood, how, how can, we make, can we make durable wood, uh, undestructible um, for the use. Traditionally, they had a big knowledge for that, and now we have to discover it again and to confirm and to precise this old knowledge. And one thing is, for example, uh, in the drying process, how much does the tree lose water depending on the moment when you have cut the tree? And here we find again this fluctuation. Here are these uh, eight moments of the synodic moon phase. Uh, and here every week we have uh, differences from uh, relative lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, and um, relatively higher quantities of water, we found here a clear eight-phase um, difference in a water loss of uh, wood during drying. Another aspect has been examined is the position of the moon in the uh, sidereal system. That means where was the moon in front of uh, the constellations? And for the wood drying and the, for wood properties, we could demonstrate taking these constellations in the groups of the four elements of the, the old Greeks, but also already before. We can group these uh, zodiacal uh, constellations, and the moon is before these. And here we could show, I didn't show the graph, with a even more um, accuracy or a higher significance that the position of the moon in these uh, qualities of the uh, fixed uh, star um, background plays an important role. So, I'm coming to the end. Chronobiology of trees and the force faith of water. It's uh, clear now that time is an important uh, variation factor and um, we should go on researching 
uh, in terms of amount of uh, EZ water in this tree system uh, and also uh, viscosity. It's easy to express water out of wood. We have in the wood very big quantities of water. We could just squeeze it out and make analysis uh, because it's a very clean water going up. Uh, density and volume. The pulsation of the stem uh, gave me the impression that the volume of water is changing uh, rhythmically. And even the, the tides, are they only attraction or is it, uh, is it a swelling of water and a shrinkage of water? I never had a clear response for that, but I would be really interested. Energy absorption, electrical load and what is the significance for the plants and also for the human health. Maybe once we are going to make uh, wood drinks for special, special um, healing uh, purposes or um, ideas like that. I'm sure that uh, we will have many surprises in this direction. After this dynamization of water up to the crown, uh, I think that this water is very special and goes into this direction. Thank you. Thank you very much.